Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. So we've just finished working with our reduction. We created a reduction to solve this minimum spanning subgraph problem. Uh, and I've rewritten the reduction here since we're going to need it. We did some analysis on it. Now in part four of problem four, we're proving that our reduction paired with an optimal solution to the underlying uh, minimum spanning tree problem is optimal. So um, we already know that we can reduce this problem to the minimum spanning subgraph problem with no negative edge weights. We already know that the optimal solution to that is a minimum spanning tree. So we already have an optimal solution to the underlying problem that we're compiling to based on previous parts of this problem. What we have to show is that our reduction uh, produces an optimal solution to the original problem. So I'm going to take that in two steps. Uh, part one, I'm going to point out that no minimum spanning subgraph can leave out any negative weighted edge. And how do I know that? Well, assume for contradiction that it does. Well, this is a spanning subgraph, so we're always allowed to add an extra edge if we want to. It'll still be a spanning subgraph. If that extra edge is negative, it reduces the overall cost of the spanning subgraph. So in that case, it can't possibly be minimal. So we can say then we can add it back in. The result is still a spanning subgraph. And it's cheaper. That's a contradiction. In particular, it's a contradiction that it's cheaper than a minimum spanning subgraph. Okay, so now we know that we're good with all of these negative edge weights that we're putting in. This part is fine, but is the solution to the underlying problem the correct set of edges to use? Well, now we can rely on our reduction somewhat directly. We did this contraction because we were grouping together the stuff that was already connected. That's already connected by the edges that we've got to include. We must include all the negative edges. That's what we just showed in part one here. So we already have to include these. We're creating a minimum spanning tree that is the minimum set of edges, the minimum cost set of edges that we can possibly use to connect those already connected components and we can't produce a spanning subgraph that'll be any cheaper than that. So we just want to summarize that argument.
So to connect the connected components after including these edges, the least expensive solution is exactly a minimum cost spanning tree over the connected components, ignoring more expensive edges. That's a pretty high level solution to that problem, but it's definitely sufficient. So we're done with problem four, part four. Next, we'll move on to problem five.